Good evening, friends. Uh, we are back uh, on Seven Speak channel once again uh, with a lot of uh, updated information regarding the COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, essentially, uh, this uh, show has been created to provide correct information to the parents related to the schooling uh, decision, education related challenges, and other uh, uh, things uh, which uh, they don't they don't get the correct information about. Uh, I'm glad to tell you today that uh, we have a, a, a very important guest today on our show. Uh, uh, her name is Dr. Sanjana Saraf, and uh, she's here with us to discuss. Uh, uh, you know how can uh, we ensure that children remain happy uh, during the lockdown period. Uh, uh, I have personally received many emails and messages from parents, uh, uh, you know, identifying some behavioral changes in kids, and uh, there is uh, uh, there is not enough information or not enough help as of now due to the lockdown which they are relying on, and therefore uh, this uh, was one of the essential talks I wanted to hold on my show so that uh, we can uh, get some clarity, some educated uh, information uh, by a specialist. Dr. Sanjana, and uh, I would want uh, you to, first of all, uh, give a brief introduction about yourself to our viewers, please. Hi, thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm Dr. Sanjana, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I've been in this field for about say, 12 to 13 years now. And I worked with Max earlier, now I'm running my own private practice. And uh, I basically do psychotherapy for various psychological disorders for adults and children, both alike. So back to you, Shailina, that's all about me for now. All right, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, in these uh, unprecedented times, uh, you know, we, we've identified that uh, students are under constant pressure, get up early again, uh, despite being, you know, locked down. Uh, getting adjusted to the technology, uh, switching uh, dashboards from one class to another, or maybe uh, if there are not live classes, you know, dealing with uh, the e-copies and submitting back the homework. So uh, could you just make us, you know, go through, uh, help us uh, go through uh, what kind of different stress uh, children might be experiencing? We are talking about the age spectrum of, you know, a five-year to 17-year, usually a school-going kid. Mm -hmm. So in the current uh, given circumstance, it's a very um, it's a very strange, unfamiliar uh, set of circumstances for everyone, especially for the children at this point. Uh, they're struggling at this point. They're stuck at home. They're in a state of isolation. They're not being able to go out, engage in regular play as well, which is extremely therapeutic for children and important for their growth. They are not going to school anymore, a place from which not they don't only really pick up education, they don't only pick up learning and new information, but they also um, get various life skill experiences from. So what has happened, there's been a total uh, disruption in routine for children of this age group. And what happens in such situations is they start um, questioning uh, the predictability and the safety of their environment at this point. And this is what these kids are struggling with, essentially. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my next quick question would be, you know, what are the usual or typical indicators of these stress? So about, yeah. So in general uh, about stressors, uh, the consequences to experiencing uh, stress, one would see in younger children, they tend to regress. So if you're looking at a younger age group, say five or four years to or even younger, four years to say about eight or nine, they tend to show regressive behavior. All of a sudden, they would present with bedwetting. They can uh, present with sleep disturbances like night terrors and uh, nightmares alike. They would not eat properly. Uh, other things would be they start complaining of symptoms in the body, a lot of stomach ache, leg aches. So this is a set of problems that the younger kids would experience. Whereas with the adolescents, the uh, presentation would be completely different. There are some who are likely to withdraw, retract, not engage in uh, social functioning anymore. They would have crying spells. They would look upset, not engage in activities that they liked. 
The other group would be they would want to engage in more substance use. They would lash out. Uh, they would be more argumentative, more confrontational. So this, these stressors, the presentation of stressors look very different in different age groups, and even at times between genders. It's a it's a complete new knowledge to me that you know there could be uh, uh, pain in different areas such as legs, as you said, you know, yeah. out of stress. Uh, yes, it is for younger children. Yes, essentially for younger children, they're not able to verbalize or even understand their emotions. So it essentially right. presents itself in somatic symptoms. Okay, so uh, tell me, uh, you know, to go on further with the same question, uh, what is the impact of stress uh, on mental health, uh, you know, if not dealt appropriately? First of all, the impact of such stress on the mental health during the lockdown uh, uh, mm -hmm. environment and mm -hmm. how to deal with it appropriately. Okay, so um, the stress of, uh, if we just, uh, what would you like to know? Essentially, the lockdown uh, effect or the effect of stress in general? If I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm worried, uh, you know, from the point of view that uh, there is some effect of the stress uh, and, uh, you know, it has to be dealt. Now, uh, uh, how it is how it should be dealt first of all that's that's one of the one of the important point because uh, you know the entire world is closed down and you know parents have limited resources so uh, this this exactly you know my my question is uh, what is the impact of such of you know of such a stress on mental you know on mental health okay so there are two things here uh, it's not important that the children would show any long term um, uh, psychological detrimental psychological effects or even cognitive changes in the long run if they've got a safe loving caring environment at home if parents are tuned into their children's emotional needs it's less likely to happen now uh, one would tend to see a, a more um, psych a larger psychological effect on children who are the vulnerable population. The vulnerable population is essentially the ones who are suffering from economic difficulties who have had previously any form of uh, say a history of mental illness have any form of physical or developmental disability or are living a, in a particularly threatening area where uh, you know the cases are very extreme the lockdown is very severe they've been in isolation uh, for a very very long period of time so one would tend to see trauma related stress symptoms anxiety depression if these things if it's not taken care of during this time. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was also reading one of the documents which has been recently, uh, you know, published by CBSE in my last monologue, uh, which was on Facebook only. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was reading out some positive, uh, uh, you know, points which CBSE has identified and, uh, you know, has given us uh, some information on, uh, you know, what schools should do. So effectively, there is some uh, role of school counselor. So what do, what do you have to say about that? Uh, how so at this point, school counselors need to be heavily uh, involved in the process. Okay. One, they need to be trained for how to handle stressors in children during the time of uh, uh, COVID, what influences it could have. Two, they need, some, they need to be available uh, on, um, you know, via technology to them. Two, three, they should be aware of the vulnerable population of their school. Children okay. who are probably struggling with disabilities, children who are uh, who probably, if there's any indication, who have domestic abuse okay. that is also there. So the counselors need to be very aware at this point because the kids are in the situation and they have no coping mechanisms left. Another thing may be a regular update to parents on how to manage their children, a Q&A session on a regular basis where parents can address their worries with the counselor, right. even the students. The students are less likely to do it, but parents more so. All right. Mm -hmm. um, my next question, a quick question to you is, uh, uh, is there going to be a, a very long term effect or shift in the cognitive abilities of the child? No. In such stress? No, no, no. Like I said, if in the vulnerable group, if there is any uh, depression and anxiety, 
or there's yeah. trauma induced stress so there is not essentially an irreversible uh, cognitive deficit per se they may struggle with it okay. for some time but as such there's going to be no structural or permanent functional change in cognitive abilities all right all right hmm. uh so i'm sure during the lockdown time you also you know are are engaged online helping parents in such circumstances mm -hmm. so uh, my my next question is how can parents help child deal with such unprecedented times if let's say there is no access to uh, such specialists like you what mm -hmm. what should they do first of all what is what is that you would like to give them advice okay first uh, and foremost yeah first and foremost i would like to tell the parents that you first need to understand how preoccupied are you with the implications of covid and right. how worried are you about it because the more you worry the less likely you are to tune in to understand and to cater to your child's emotional needs so first look after yourself and then uh, then only you'll be able to look after your child and after that do not um, Uh, do not shy away from passing information to your children no matter what age group they are in they are already hearing the word the children okay. as young as 2 and 3 already know that there's something known as corona virus out there so okay. first is passing of information to children now it has to be age appropriate for younger kids say about from the age group of 4 to 7 or 8 they okay. feel that if anybody falls sick but if there's an illness there is a personal reason they may have caused it so it's very important to tell them and to educate them via cartoons there are a lot of books out there at this point by right. very good authors so use the books to explain to them other thing with older children uh limit their exposure to the news don't discuss too much about it at home but essentially you have to find out what your children know about coronavirus what do they know about covid they should have the facts in place it should not be associated with a lot of anxiety correct another thing um, so we are we are in a state of uh, social distancing let's not use it as a state of social isolation wherein okay. you don't interact with kids kids have to interact they have to have a collaborative you can spend time with children for collaborative play like board games get them involved in tasks like cooking spend time with them during the day i know everybody is very packed with schedules taking care of their homes work everything but make little bit of time for that let kids interact with their grandparents with their cousins over skype on a regular basis another important thing is thirdly i would say have a broad schedule for your kids they're already struggling at that end they're struggling right. have a broad schedule similar to what they would have when they're going to school have a schedule like that they work best with predictability in environment and okay. along with that see if they're struggling with sleep okay. avoid afternoon naps for children uh okay. take care of the stigma that is also coming on to it one way to do is maybe get adolescents involved in some kind of uh community work associated with stigma so adolescents respond very well to any activity that involves unity and togetherness especially uh these days get them uh, another thing we call is self soothing so okay. this is children self soothing you know how they can self soothe with different forms of music when they're stressed out by reading uh with a hot bath with by fixing themselves a snack stepping out into the balcony so these are some tools to use okay another thing with uncertainty is if the child asks you when will this get over we don't know we tell them that and the uncertainty goes up suddenly there's a spike a better way would be okay let's do one thing mm -hmm. let's do one day at a time let's see how we can make this moment better what can correct. you and i do to feel better right now correct so these are a few things that parents can do give them good breaks between the academic work restrict screen time okay about it take care of it i i think you rightly said uh, you know uh, parents need equal uh, you know equal counseling to to mm -hmm. not just children they also you know need to be guided well to deal with 
the situation here and i think uh, you know we all need to work together to process the emotional components of these sources of stress um, you know in the background of these stress there is some emotional component which essentially uh, you know needs to be cared uh, you know taken care of and that's how i think should think things should uh, get improved uh, uh, for for our viewers who are actually uh, you know watching us uh, for the first time i'd like to say that uh, 7.in www.7.in is a, a school review platform we are essentially um, an education network and we help to uh, bridge the gap between the information uh, the school provides uh, to the parent essentially in india the schooling decision has been you know relatively a private affair uh, while choosing the school we only ask our friends and neighbors and we have very limited information which is posted by school uh, in the newspaper advertisement or in their website the inside story sometimes is not known so we are encouraging parents to come on to our portal uh, share their experience about the school it's not just the school you know parents can also review teachers parents can share their fees experience that they, they can uh, also share experience about the admission process they had gone to you know gone through any any school and uh, down there on the ticker uh, while in you know while this video is being is is broadcasted live i've already mentioned that there is a link for the survey we are collecting information about parents um, uh, how is their school dealing with such uh, stress among the kids is there help which parents are getting uh, the idea is not to highlight the bad aspects of the school, but we just want to understand how effectively the schools are uh, uh, modeling this process, how effectively schools are dealing with the stress, uh, you know, uh, levels of the kids and uh, what kind of help parents are getting. Uh, I think the session has been very informative and very quick, uh, uh, Dr. Sanjana, and I'm glad that, you know, you've given us some insight uh, about uh, how parents should actually deal with this. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being uh, here with us, uh, you know, on this show. And uh, we hope to get, uh, we hope to, to, to uh, invite you again uh, uh, back on our show. Uh, uh, I would urge parents to, if you have any questions, just uh, send us uh, uh, the information at info at 7.in uh, on our website. And uh, we'll be happy to connect up uh, between you and Dr. Sanjana. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.